Um, good afternoon. Welcome to the City of Opelika um, work virtual workshop on COVID-19. Um, due to the crisis that we're dealing with, the City Commission decided that it is important for us to ensure that we meet on a weekly uh, basis to get the latest updates and to talk um, and engage our, our residents and everyone um, about uh, COVID-19 and our response to it. So today is a time for us to do that in this platform. Uh, with that said, um, Madam Clerk or Madam Attorney, um, could you lay out the uh, public uh, procedures for um, getting in touch with the city and being a part of these workshops? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Pursuant to executive order number 20-69 issued by the Office of the Governor Ron DeSantis on March the 20th, 2020, municipalities may conduct meetings of their governing boards without having a quorum of its members present physically or at any specific location and utilizing communications media technologies such as telephonic or video conferencing as provided by section 120.545B2 Florida statutes. The members of the city commission appearing remotely for this meeting are Vice Mayor Davis, Commissioner Bass, Commissioner Burke, Commissioner Kelly, and Mayor Pigott. An opportunity was given to the public to email the city clerk prior to the commission meeting. And at this time, I would request that the city clerk state for the record whether she has received any questions, comments, concerns, or items that um, you will, on items that you will hear this evening at this workshop meeting. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor. Madam Clerk. No, I have not received any comments from the from the pu public. All right. Um, I want to continue to encourage our residents to please use public comments at opalakafl.gov um, to stay engaged and make sure that your voice is heard as we um, handle the business of our community. With that said, um, Commissioner uh, Kelly, would you lead us in invocation? Our Father and our God, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Continue, God, give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Do those things which are pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, Commissioner Burke, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. All right. As thank you very much. Um, as the clerk mentioned, um, we don't have any public comments at the moment, but please, please, please make sure you do so. So let's get on to our discussion items. Um, I would like to uh, do the do this in the stagger area first. I want to get a update on the testing because um, that's the highest priority that we have. Let's talk about um, and flush out the details for this ordinance, um, this mask ordinance, so we can get that taken care of. And then let's um, go into details about this reopening plan um, that we must um, go through and then any other um, updates um, from there. So um, with that, I just wanted to just start off with the, the testing um, and just give a matter, Mr. Manager, uh, would you go ahead and talk about the testing, the details of the testing? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for this opportunity. Um, testing has been a quite interesting subject for the last, I guess, uh, 24 hours. Um, T details in regards to testing have changed at least uh, on two or three occasions. Um, as many of you all are aware, we're getting severe inclement weather coming into the area, to the region this weekend, uh, which has caused Miami-Dade County and the state uh, to close their testing sites effective this evening, opening the testing sites back up on Monday. Except in the case of the Opalaka, we're still gonna do our soft opening on Sunday, it was gonna to be tomorrow. They changed it from tomorrow to Sunday for staff, um, uh, commissioners, staff, and uh, public safety, law enforcement personnel to get tested on Sunday. 
Uh, there is a press conference scheduled at 10.30 a.m. on Monday uh, that will have stakeholders from the state, state, uh, state of Florida, uh, Florida National Guard, Miami-Dade County, and of course our local stakeholders and our uh, county commissioner's office and our state uh, representatives and local record, uh, other local representatives as well. Uh, that press release was just finalized today. Um, the site has been upgraded uh, to 12 and over, both symptomatic and asymptomatic. So that means anybody can take a test at our site. You don't have to have symptoms. I uh, wanna make it very clear. Uh, we have 120 slots of appointments and 80 slots of walk-up. So I say this because um, we want to make sure we utilize those 200 slots a day in order to keep the site open on a seven day a week basis. So, you know, we need to put the word out. Um, uh, Jessica has been, uh, been uh, working with me uh, very closely today and ensuring that we kind of put that word out to our residents uh, and various other stakeholders about that testing and making sure we get these uh, slots taken up uh, because I think that's key. Um, I think the 80, 80 test walk up is great, especially for a, a town like ours. Everybody doesn't always, everybody's not always in the know and if residents just want to walk up and say, hey, I'm in a neighborhood and I want to take a test. Hey, come on, stand in line and take a test, you know, and, and instead of being turned away as other testing sites have been doing. Um, so I think that's very, very, very much important um, to discuss uh, logistics. The National Guard would be handling on-site logistics um, as far as dealing with the tents. You have an on-site nursing company that's dealing with uh, registering uh, people that are taking a test uh, and administering tests. You have a Miami-Dade uh, Police Department that will be doing traffic control and site security. Uh, you have a private security company that will be maintaining the site at night, along with uh, Overlocker Police Department be doing additional patrols in the area. Uh, all this out of zero pocket of the city. So uh, I think that's a huge achievement. Um, so those are kind of the gist of that. Uh, I call Monday our VIP day. Um, uh, there may be a visit from the governor himself to the site. I, uh, I, I um, am encouraging our elected officials and appointed officials to be on site on Monday at 10.30 a.m. for the press conference uh, to show a sign of solidarity and appreciation for the state and the county to get together and bring in the site uh, here. Does anybody have any site-specific questions for me? I just want to um, add on there because this is a very, very significant achievement um, for us to be able to get a site within the city of Opalaka. Um, and it's been literally weeks, um, almost two months of consistent effort uh, to make this happen. Um, and it's been a very difficult um, political strategy and conversations to make this happen um, over the past few weeks um, and also to clarify those details. So uh, I wanna make sure that we give a special shout out, please everybody on the commission um, and in our community, please make sure you reach out to Commissioner Barbara Jordan's office um, and her support for um, getting the county involved to assist with paying for the test. The county is actually footing the bill for the test um, in the city of Opalaka. Um, for all, all these um, tests and, and um, the mayor's office, Mayor Jimenez's office, and especially Deputy Mayor uh, Kemp put a lot of work in to make sure that this is happening. Um, our uh, representatives, um, um, Senator Oscar Brain, and especially uh, uh, State Representative uh, Chevron Jones have been critical in getting the state to come in to foot the other part. Um, as you remember, the manager was talking about this, what cost us 18,000, um, I think, was it a day or something? Yeah, Mr. Manager? Yeah, yeah. 18,000 a day. Um, and through uh, coordinating with um, the county and, and the state, 
um, the governor's office uh, put in um, and the department of um, the director, uh, Jared Moskowitz um, put in, they recognize the challenges that the city is facing uh, with the high or very high infection rate within the city of Opelika. Um, and they pulled out all the stops. And not only did they pull out all the stops to get this within the city of Opelika during this time, uh, we are the second um, test walk-up testing center in Miami-Dade County. Um, and also the only one um, in North Dade that handles uh, children and a systematic uh, 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 test. And those were specific asks to make sure that all of our children, um, all of our residents um, are tested. So this is a huge, huge, huge deal. Um, um, make sure we give kudos to um, all those involved. I can't tell you the it's well it's been a lot y'all <laughs> it's been a lot to get to this point um so just kudos to all this involved um there's a lot of hands so uh, much respect for for everyone to uh, pull in to make this happen um and at no cost to the city of opalaka yeah um and sunday uh i i i will be out there with bells on i expect to see my commissioners out there my appointed uh, peers if need be, and staff, just be in line to take that uncomfortable test up the nose. So, it, you know, it's free, you know, it's out there and you can get it test as much as you want. And even if you gotten tested before, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's not, it's not safe to get tested again. So please utilize the opportunity, please get tested on Sunday. Uh, this would be the only day where, you know, it'd be uh, uh, sectioned off for staff, for a special VIP group where we can get through these lines, get the testing done, not stand in long lines and get through and hopefully get our results in a timely manner. Mr. Pregnant. I'm Commissioner Bass. The city Manager, um, you stated some facts that I, I wrote them down, but just to reiterate for me, please, you said the time frame for testing on Sunday, it starts at what time? Uh, it's, uh, it's nine to two. Okay. Nine to two. Okay. That will also be the time for the seven day per week testing? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. So testing site will actually be open up nine to five, but two o'clock is when they take the last patient. So the line is not bagged up so they can close at five. Okay. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments uh, about testing? All right, now let's move on to the mask ordinance. Uh, all right, so uh, yesterday uh, we made changes to this uh, that detailed the um, penalties for uh, this ordinance, uh, where first time offense is 100, second time offense 150, third time offense $250, all handled by um, the special magister. Um, I think we agreed upon that. And there was uh, another thing we wanted to discuss. Um, and actually, I have, I'm having a brain slow down right now. Um, so I believe, uh, Commissioner Kelly, um, there was something else that we wanted to um, address or we needed to discuss in more detail. Could you remind us of that? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, a couple of things. The first one was the issue with the multi-family uh, housing. Um, how we wanted to address that, that was um, one issue. Um, I see it in the legislation um, in terms of the cost. I do have some questions about that, but the, the, other, the main part, which I still don't really see in here, um, is how those uh, multi-unit complexes would be addressed. Um, I thought maybe I saw it in one of the the, the numerals, but I'm not sure if that was supposed to cover that. So if someone can direct that 
to me, I would um, stand corrected because I didn't see it when I looked at um, the legislation. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Madam Attorney. Yes, through the mayor. Um, Commissioner Kelly, we cannot add it unless it's added during a meeting. So the, uh, pro the our understanding was it's going to be discussed tonight. You all would discuss that issue and how you wanted to add it, but we can't actually add it in unless you voted on it at the last meeting. The only thing we can do at this point is we can have a separate sheet based on what you say tonight with your notes so that you can actually see it in writing and we can put it in writing prior to and then make the appropriate changes that you discuss tonight and agree upon um, in concept um, and then you can vote on it at the meeting. So there really wasn't a way for us to do it. You did vote on the, um, the issue with the penalty and that's included under section five, but nothing else was changed um, per the notes and votes that the clerk, clerk recorded. Okay, um, well, we, we need to, to, um, to add that in there because that's a major concern. How do we make, to, to make sure that those apartment um, multi-unit complexes um, comply? So I don't know where you want to put it in there uh, or the wording, but that was really what I wanted to make sure got put in there because they're not, that's one of the biggest challenges we have is in those areas. And I think whether it's some kind of um, penalty, fine, whatever, for those complexes or ownership themselves to get them comply if they don't um, adhere to it. I don't know where you want to put that uh, or where, but we need something that um, gets them to do what they need to do. Do the mayor. All right, so yeah, let's, um, first of all, let's find out whether or not, because based upon my understanding of this ordinance, it applies to public places. So please, uh, first of all, Madam Attorney, tell me whether or not it does apply to private property, um, number one. And then two, what exactly would staff suggest we put in place to, address that concern okay well the manager can speak to what he thinks could be put in place but currently um it would apply to um you know anywhere over the all over the city so that would include um you know off of you know any 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 public i guess even the common areas or whatever and the spaces that are part of that complex, but um, you all were going to flush that out a little bit more and the manager may have some ideas for you right now. Through the mayor. Because right now I'm looking at this and it specifically says um, public space, any place other than individual's home or personal vehicle and multifamily houses are considered a personal home. Is that incorrect? Uh, there may be well, Mr. go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Manager. Go ahead. You got it. The so what the so as far as the definition of a public place and dealing with a multi-family uh, unit is the apartment that the person rents, not the walkway that they walk down, not the grass in front of the door of their apartment. It is the actual dwelling that they actually rent and pay rent that is listed on the lease. That is what's de determined as a, uh, uh, a private place in terms of dealing with apartment complexes. So if somebody was to be standing outside their apartment complex, that will be more, that will be considered more of a public place, not their private place. And then, and then also the idea that I had um, as far as enforcing um, something and the attorney may be able to assist me to find some uh, legal ease to kind of incorporate this in the rule is maybe some type of violation um, that uh, deems that the apartment complex, uh, that, that their activities uh, do not uh, that uh, their activities affect the health and welfare of 
a specific area of the complex, thus like not enforcing um, a, a mask, the mask rule or having people congregating outside and not practicing social distancing, um, allowing groups to gather during curfew where apartment complexes already have provisions through other ordinances that were passed by this commission requiring those apartment, apartment complexes to have sec on-site security to maintain the good order of that area. Something tying those things together and making that a separate violation on the complex itself. Is that something that's possible? That's kind of how I'm envisioning it, but we have to make it like based on safety, health, welfare type situation. Well, okay, Commissioner Kelly. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the attorney can craft the language, but yeah, you definitely, but I, I also want to see something obviously that makes the folks adhere to it, but I want to put some kind of pressure, for lack of a better term, on these owners of these apartments to, to, to comply, to, that, that they have stake in this so that their security people will even say to folks, hey, you're supposed to wear a mask, not just waiting for the police to show up in there. They need to have some kind of um, motivation, I guess, lack of term, to enforce what we're doing. Um, if, if, if it's all doable through the language that the manager's saying, that's fine, but we need to hold them accountable. We're going into these, to these units um, already. We've already seen it. So I, I'm looking for some wording that, that not only deals with the tenants who are outside of their units, as the manager mentioned, but to hold these apartment complexes accountable as well, that they're, they're enforcing the fact of what we've put in place. And I think that, and through the mayor, and I think the best way to do it is through the pockets. The, the, the what? The, the getting hitting hitting the pockets of the owners of these complexes. So remember we uh, talked about not fining our residents high, high fines because of uh, the complication of them may not having the financial uh, means to pay the fines. But these complexes, though have the financial means to pay larger fines, uh, maybe a $500 fine uh, for a fence uh, if it's observed that they are contributing to the, you know, uh, uh, create, creation of uh, health, welfare uh, uh, type situation by not enforcing the mask rules not enforcing social distancing, not enforcing curfew. And these would be apartment complexes that the city have already mandated that they have mandated security on site. So there's already a mandate by the city for them to have security on the site to deal with those matters. Um, well, uh, I wanna, go ahead, Commissioner Kelly. I, I don't have a problem with that. And that's kind of, I mean, I don't know how the attorney could word it, but we got to make sure that these owners have a stake in this, that they have a, a, re, a reality check, because otherwise it still puts it all on us. They got they got to feel some kind of pressure. And like you said, the only way that they feel pressure or feel like they got to do something if it hits them in the pocketbook. And, and that's kind of what I was alluding to, not just so much finding the folks over there, but to make those owners of those apartments through their ownership and through their security say to folks, Hey, you got to wear these things because they come over here. I don't know if they have how many citations that we're going to be liable or we're going to face some kind of fine. We got to put it in such a way that they feel an, an impact if they're not helping us comply. And that's that's the, the wording as such that I want to you know make sure we capture. Otherwise, they don't have a skin in the game, and so they're not going to do anything, which makes um, our job tougher. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I would actually strongly caution against that, um, putting it upon the owners. Um, I think that will probably kill this whole ordinance if it goes into law. Um, if we are requiring 
uh, apartment complexes to enforce it. Um, that's like saying we as a city of Opelika will be fined if there are people outside that do not uh, comply. Um, or we're telling teachers if a student didn't, uh, like how they tell teacher, if a student didn't learn, you're gonna find a teacher. Like that, that would, that would destroy this whole thing. I, I think if we um, put up upon some financial things for owners, we know how people are. Um, there are going to be people that will not abide by this. And if they don't respect our officers, why would they respect a security person that can't do nothing to them? Like security guards at these complexes don't really have much power. Um, so I, if, if we target them, uh, the property owners, yeah, I, I can see that going way left very quickly. And if we in the city of Opelika can't, aren't enforcing it throughout our whole city, they can easily point the finger right back at us and be like, what are you doing to these other uh, apartment uh, residents? So um, that, that that's my two cents to that. Through the mayor. Oh, Mr. Manager. Well, if I can, if I may, holding the apartment complex owners accountable does one thing. If their tenant is not accountable, they get evicted. So if a tenant is causing issues on the property and is leading to violations that the property owner is uh, uh, obtaining, then it, it leads to eviction. There are laws on the books, similar laws on the books already where if a tenant does X, Y, and Z, commits crime X, Y, and Z, and they're not fulfilling their obligation and the owner of the property does not evict or does not do anything to hold that tenant accountable, then that property owner could be held accountable. There are similar, the similar legislation that's out there to address things like this. So it can it it, it can happen. It, it, it's something that is something that can that can occur. If if you have a a, a a person that's living on living, you're paying them rent. They're living there. They're not following the rules. They get a three day or five day notice or whatever notice. They get evicted. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Madam, Madam Attorney. Yes, I, I don't want you all to believe that it's that simple. Um, yeah. Okay. So it, well, it's, not, it's not, and you'll find us being sued. Um, but what I will, what I can do is I can look back at how we crafted. We did something not long ago that was connected to um, the what requirements there would be for someone to come in and actually receive their licensure um, for these large, for the larger units. Um, now you have to decide what you want to do in terms of multifamily units. You know, are you talking about any multifamily unit? Um, because that could get unwieldy in terms of trying to enforce it and also fines and fees that you might be looking to impose against the, um, the landlords. Um, it, it, it's not as simple um, and, it, and, and I would, you know, try to look at, and I know we'll have a, we, um, the, the reading, we do have a little bit of time because um, Joanna couldn't get it um, posted for it to be a second reading at the very next meeting. So it would have to be on the following meeting, which might give us, a, you know, enough time to even talk about it in another um, workshop setting. But, um, you know, there are legal ramifications. We want to make sure that you all don't get immediate blowback like you probably will when you when when you um, implement this or if you implement it but you you all need to give us some guidance on how large the units you're talking about are you talking units um, apartment units or buildings over 25 units or you know some some lower level you know you have to give us a little bit more guidance and then I can help craft something around that that um, may keep you out of trouble, hopefully. 
Go to mayor. Mayor. Um, what's the manager? Oh, I'm gonna actually give credit, but I'm gonna actually give uh, credit to Commissioner uh, uh, Kelly. He's already have something. He already has a law in the books that regulates the amount, number of units, and security and stuff like that. So this is not this is this is not something we should have to reinvent the wheel on. There's legislation passed. So many units require security guards. And it was the it was the apartments that had the most issues that we had, which are the similar same apartments that we're dealing with now, uh, with the similar issues to COVID nineteen. So the you know the the framework is there is just moving some moving pieces from there and incorporate it into this if possible. I'm sorry for taking your thunder, uh, Commissioner Kelly. Uh, I, I just com thinking about Mayor, it. Commissioner Kelly. Thank you. I I, I recognize. Um, it could be challenged, and I, I'm not saying it's easy to even enforce on any of this, whether it's an apartment or whether it's somebody walking down the street. But we've seen just what we've been facing. We have to do something, and I'm going to say this, and I, I know it may not go over well. Until we get a handle on these, these apartment complexes that are just doing whatever and allowing whatever to continue to get HUD dollars and funding, but we have to go over and police them because they're not doing what it's supposed to have got one security guard out there sitting in the gate or walking around with a t-shirt or whatever. We're gonna to continue to face these issues. These folks are making millions of dollars and have been making you know, over the years. And yet we find ourselves constantly in and out in the same complexes and we can't designate them because that'll trigger a lawsuit, how many units, but it's a constant ongoing situation where resources are used. And so at some point, this city is going to have to take a stand on dealing with these apartment complexes. I, I'm waiting to hear at the end of this from some of the stuff happening on the weekend. We're talking about masks. I, I don't understand why we cannot have or, or have folks who are the security company do the management to just say to folks, wear your mask. And if there's not, there's some kind of penalty. I, I don't know why we can't do that or wouldn't want to do that. I'm not the attorney. She says, we'll get sued. So I guess you have to look at that from a legal standpoint. But doing nothing, in my opinion, is not an option. Because otherwise, we, may not even, we might as well not even have a mass ordinance. Because many of our challenges we know come from these, these complexes. So if we're not going to deal with it, if we're not going to enforce it, we're not going to hold them to the fire on the basic stuff, then why even have a, a ordinance to just pick on the guy walking down the street? And most of the issues are coming from, we know where they're coming from. So if the attorney's saying to us that, you know, there may not be any wording, I, I, I will defer to her judgment. I would ask that she would just look at, to see how we can have some kind of enforcement that could coordinate what we already have on the books. If we can't make them, at least, you know, that word I don't like, strongly encourage um, to do something. But doing nothing to me regarding that is not, a, is not an option. Um, it's not an option. I, I'll wait to hear what my colleagues have to say on that part, Mr. Mayor, and then I had another couple of questions regarding the ordinance. Thank you. Any, um, anyone else on this subject about uh, apartment complexes? Mayor Paget? Commissioner Bass? In my opinion, I think there's a conversation that needs to be had with um, the other parties because for us to sit here and to come up with all of this, that sounds good. And we don't know what the apartment owners or managers even contemplating as it relates to mass. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I'm totally for it, but I'm saying we need to have a conversation with them before we can do this. Because we can say whatever we want to say as in, you know, they need to play their role, they need to do what they need to do, but they don't even know that we're having this conversation. I think we need to have a conversation with them um, now or don't know so that we can work together to solve this because at the end of the day, there are three parties involved. It's us, it's the commission, there's the apartment complexes, and there's the citizens of Opalaka who need also to be responsible to um, take on some responsibility of, of all of this for safe zoom. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor Davis. 
Um, thank you. Um, just to echo my colleagues' concerns, um, I think we need to have an in-depth conversation with the property management uh, company. Like you said, I don't know which ways we can hold them accountable. We already have um, pretty much laws on the book um, to the same effect of public safety and and um, you know security, requiring all apartment complex of a certain size to have security and the like. Um, I mean, we just at this point, we just need to have a conversation with them and sit down and just see, you know, where we are, you know, where where we need to go, you know, what are the challenges, you know, how we can better work together, because I think we would try to address things from um, several different angles. And we have yet to, you know, yet to see movement in any areas, in my opinion. So thank you. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Burke, do you have anything? No, um. Okay. All right, um, Commissioner Kelly. I, 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 I appreciate all of the comments. We ought to have a con we, we ought to have a meeting that comes to some kind of resolution. We've had, we've had conversation with these property management folks who can't make any decisions. So I would hope if you're gonna have meetings, the manager, chief, whoever is designated, you have with somebody that can make decisions. Because a lot of times we have these meetings with property managers who can't make any decisions, who gotta go talk to somebody else, who gotta go find somebody else. And we're five months later trying to get somebody that can okay, agree or give consensus. So just having a meeting with whoever's on site is not enough. So I'm just gonna say that right out because that's been part of the challenge is getting to the folks who can actually make some kind of decision, not just the folks sitting over in the buildings. So since you got an extra week or two because of the reading, you got time to reach out to folks who can make decisions, meet with them, et cetera, get their input um, and whatever that we're, you know, let them know what we're trying to do and come back. But please meet with someone who can make decisions and will make decisions, not just folks who go, you know, meet and say, oh yeah, we agree. Oh yeah, we're gonna work with you and nothing happened. But that is what historically happens with these apartment complexes. That's historically what happens. And I don't wanna see us spinning our wheels and these folks, you know, have no intention in my opinion of really following through to assist us in any form or fashion. That's all I have on that part. I wanted to at appropriate time address a couple more things in order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Burke. Um, you know, most of the, most of these apartment complexes have property manage property management. But if I if I can remember, um, Commissioner Kelly, um, Vice Mayor Davis, you remember um, when we were having trouble over there? I think we got to meet with the owners and. I think that's where Commissioner Kelly is going with this. Um, maybe we need to reach out to the owners of the complex and have a dialogue with the owners rather than the property management. Because like um, Commissioner Kelly says, property management can only do so much. Um, I, I believe um, if, in my office or Vice Mayor, I, I, I believe we have the um, information to get in touch with um, owners over in the back blues. Um, I'm not too sure about 22nd Avenue and um, I guess the back blues um, and the one the, in the apartments in front of Quick Stop, but I guess we could get community development of somebody um, to do a property search and uh, we should be able to come up with ownership information um that way but i can check i can check tomorrow when i go into my office and see if um, I, I still have the contact information for the owners and the back in the back blues thank you sir um thank you very much um i, I hear my colleagues con con concerns um and I'm I'm a stay of the opinion that of us trying to get property owners to do something about people on their on their property. 
um, is, is really reflecting how we as a city uh, enforce the laws. Um, these laws are put in place, they are there, and it is people who violate them. And to try and have some type of middle person um, try and do our job to enforce um, these laws and penalize them uh, for it is, it, it's over. It's gonna be a more cost to them um, and it's a more cost to anybody that wants to have or own or develop a property in, in our uh, community. Um, and that, that affects us as a, as a city. Um, so I, I, I was strong, I, me, I just, I strongly caution about uh, taking it that far um, because this is a law that as it stands, it's there and we enforce it just as though we enforced um, shootings, this is though we enforce stealing, burglaries, all these other um, things that still happen in these areas, um, despite the fact that there are some very serious laws and enforcement um, against it. Um, so the other thing that uh, was brought up, uh, brought to our attention, um, that I wanted to make sure we really think about when it comes to this ordinance is the age. Right now we have on here, which was modeled after Birmingham, where it's uh, two years and older. Um, and I don't know, uh, I know many of you know how difficult it is to have keep a child to have something covering their face um, and whether or not we want to keep it at two years old. Um, I think it should be a little older than that. Um, probably like seven, eight, ten. Um, but I, um, I think we should amend that part. Um, so I would like to hear my colleagues' thoughts on the age of people who um, wear these masks. Mr. Mayor, um, be before we go there, mm -hmm. um, you were saying that, you know, like, 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 like I said before, I understand our intent is to safeguard our people and our intent is to take care of our people but like i say um even even with the property owners okay um if you know if you know if the property owners just you know just handed you know did a little bit just a little bit if you knew you were gonna get say um um, evicted or if somebody was selling drugs from your apartment, you know, you would sort of curtail that. I'm not, I'm not saying that we have to, you know, um, go all out, but um, yes, you're right. It's our law. We're responsible for enforcing it. But, and, and, and um, these um, big con um, conglomerate apartment complexes you know, um, we're going to need some help. I mean, we, 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 don't, we don't have a police force like um, Miami Gardens. We don't have a police force like North Miami. I mean, the, the worst we can do is reach out to them, Mr. Mayor. That's the worst we can do. Yeah. I, I hear you loud and clear about reaching out, but you hit it right on the head when you say if we as a city uh, which leverage uh, uh, taxes from people and have a multi-million dollar budget um, and have difficulty affording it, why would we think a property owner would? Um, and I do understand the fact that some of these are loaned by national uh, companies. But to me, it's, it's, it's the same format. Uh, but yeah, we, we, I, 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 let's reach out and let's have that conversation um, and we can further go into further details with that. Um, when we have that conversation. Um, so I'm, I'm down with that, but I would love to hear this, this age piece. Ms. Payette. Madam, um, Commissioner Bass. If I may, I have nine grandbabies and one should be here shortly. Um, I thought the same thing you did a two-year-old. I don't think so. But however, I think a five-year-old is more um, at a place where mom says, keep it on, they'll keep it on for the most part, but not not a two, three-year-old, four-year-old. I don't think so. 
my take. Thank you. So five five years old. That's my, yeah, I think five. That's that's my opinion. Okay. Mr. And I'm and I I I I I'll do this, and I don't know if the rest of my colleagues would uh is okay with this, but I'm open to anybody weighing in on this uh, that's on this call uh, necessary. But go ahead, Vice Mayor Davis. Um, listen, I just had a question. At what age do um, children typically, at what age are they able to tie their shoes like independently? Like what, like three, four, something like that? Um, Mayor Peggy, may I answer? Oh, <laughs> Commissioner Bass, through the mayor. Go ahead, time. Commissioner Bass. <laughs> My opinion, um, it doesn't matter the child's age, it's if they have been taught early enough. Um, because we have kids in our elementary school, second, third grade cannot tie their shoes. So I don't think it's a matter of, um, age when it comes to um, tying the shoe, it would be the same for me as the mask. If the right. child is taught to wear that mask, they will wear the mask. But I still think two is too young. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Hold on, uh, Vice Mayor, stay out the floor. No, I just want to end with this. Um, I'm thinking somewhere between like four or five. Like I'm, I'm along the same lines. I yield to you know anyone else's opinion if they have if they dealt with the matter more intimately. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Burke. Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to let the vice mayor know I was in sixth grade before I tied my shoes. So, <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want to put that out in public, man? <laughs> I was in sixth grade. So. <laughs> All right. Any anyone else want to weigh in on that? Mayor. Um, Commissioner Kelly. Yes. Um, I, I also, that was one of the things I wanted to bring up. I thought two was too um, young. Usually kids start playing sports at, at about four or five with the peewees. So four or five, uh, in my opinion, would be more appropriate. Um, I would probably just say five, even though peewees do play at four wearing a helmet. So um, just keep it middle. I think eight or nine or 10 is too old. But I think five would be um, would be more amenable. Okay. All right. So then um, it looks like we got pretty much consistent consensus. So um, at the next commission meeting, uh, when we have an opportunity to bring this up, um, let's uh, move that up to five years uh, old. Um, any other discussion on this mass ordinance? In yes, Mr. Mayor. It. All right, Commissioner Kelly. Um, under um, section five, I'm really trying to get a clarity from the attorney on the wording, section five and um, where it says the um, police department, um, all violations section charged by the police department um, is that just a, a, a wording? Because I thought we talked about this, that it would be both police and code could um, issue these citations. Or is that just a general term that the police have to be the one to refer to? I know they can't because code enforcement does stuff too. But I noticed I, I didn't see code or whatever agency. I just see specific police department that's doing the referring. So it's just, just wording. No, I think it's just wording. We can um, certainly expand it so that it captures both um, um, any violators that who are cited by code or the police. And we can actually just uh, make it general uh, about just violators. Yeah, because the way, when I look at that, it just gives me the impression only the police can do it. And I, I know we had talked about code enforcement and the police being able to do it because both of them deal with the special, um, deal with the special, uh, master so right. we could look at that wording no and, problem uh, and also um mr mayor um even though this is a it's an ordinance i, I think we need to put some language in there because times do change that you you look at it um i know a lot of the other cities that have done it most of them did it as emergency orders um uh, with time extensions or time frames on them but I, I'd like to, to put somewhere where you look at it again in six months or a year, semi-annually or something, where you revisit just to see if things have changed. 
I was looking for some wording in there that covered that, but I didn't, didn't see it. Through the mayor, if I may. Um, yeah, come, yeah, um, Madam Attorney, because I want to, I, I know that we specifically asked that this applies to um, a pandemic right. that is based upon human to human transmission. Um, right. So, That's what I was going to say, yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead, Madam Attorney. Yeah, that that's. Um, I heard you say that the other night, and um, you know, yes, last night. I guess the <laughs> time was. Um, I, I heard you say that, and I didn't comment then because um, the mayor's right. The intent that was brought um, forth by the commissioners for this ordinance has to do with just during pandemics and related public health emergencies that threaten life, health, safety of residents. And so really we're talking about extreme situations. And so while it can be re, uh, revisited in six months, if you know, there could very well be some issues that are going on that um, necessitate it, you don't have to put that language in the ordinance. You all can just choose to revisit it if you, if, you know, if you choose to. Um, so that it's not automatic and you're not having to notice stuff because it is expensive whenever you do these ordinances, as you know. And, um, and so, you know, you can, you can just decide, you can have your own tickler. You don't have to actually have any specific language for it. Okay, well, long as that covered, that's fine. Okay. I just so wanted just, to make sure that. Okay, so we're clear that this specifically relates to a pandemic that has um, human to human type I think that is the definition of a pandemic. Okay. All right. Um, anything else on the mask ordinance? All right. So um, as everyone knows, uh, this we are currently entering into a phase where all across um, the nation, people are the uh, countries, um, well, states and counties are reopening. And the White House, the CDC provided guidelines um, that uh, let us know what would be the smart way to um, reopen. Um, and one of those key components was a downward trend in infections and deaths. Um, the state of Florida and um, uh, Miami-Dade County is on an upward trend and we are continuing to uh, move forward with reopening. And yesterday, the uh, county mayor has released a reopening plan um, that will affect uh, all of our city. And um, right now, I would like uh, the manager um, and, and staff to um, present to us what they believe should be um, some edits to that plan so it relates to us in the city of Opelika. And the reason why um, we believe that and personally believe that we may have to reopen because um, we do have one of the highest rates of infections in the uh, state of Florida. Uh, we have a population that is uh, vulnerable um, to the ultimate um, end result of the disease, which is death. And this is something that it's going to affect us uh, moving forward. So we have to develop a, a new normal uh, within the city of Opelika. Um, so yes, we can op open up, our businesses can open up because we are part of a critical industry. Um, the city of Opelika is a transportation and industrial hub. Um, many of our industrial workers provide the basic resources um, all across the globe. And that's why a lot of us have essential, a lot of our businesses have been open because a lot of them are essential. Um, and we want to make sure that um, people who do work in the city of Opelika do work in a protected uh, manner and, and can continue to do business. So I'm hoping that uh, we can come to figure out how this works um, for us um, in our city and crafting a new normal because this disease, we're only we're in the very beginning phases of this disease and its impact on us um, as a community. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. Manager. I'll start speaking caveat. If I am wrong, Madam Attorney, please correct me. Um, based on the basic research of the reopening plan, um, as was presented uh, 
yesterday evening, um, the governor's office, I think, are, are still in negotiations with both Miami-Dade and Broward counties in regards to how that reopening plan would be established. Uh, in looking at those reopening plans, I have not found any language where it would provide cities any additional leverage to be more restrictive. Uh, the last order, a reopening plan order that was uh, put out was dealing with parks and that specifically stated that cities can be more restrictive in their green spaces. In this order, um, as is being drafted and, and, uh, and eventually approved, uh, does not provide any provisions for cities to be more restrictive than what the county is putting out. Um, the question we run into is, if this does happen and occur, we would have to abide by the county's order fully, um, and we would have to educate our businesses on that order and what's required. Um, and like I said, I have not even seen a full executed copy of that order yet. Uh, Attorney Weeks, have you seen a full executed copy of that order as of yet? Yes, I have. Um, the order essentially, all it does is it lifts um, Miami-Dade and Broward from no longer, um, basically it makes everybody else, makes us just like the order that he introduced and signed um, on the fourth of this month. So we can now, as of today, the executive order just came out, operate consistently with the rest of the state. Um, now, there are some things that are closed, like um, I think the beaches are going to continue to be closed, and um, there are some other um, uh, businesses, and I think I may have mentioned some of those to you a little bit earlier, which include, um, let's see, which include, and I'm not pulling it up fast enough, but um, meetings outside, well, I'll have to, what I'll do is I will summarize it for the commissioners and I'll send it out because I, I don't, I'm not finding my um, text notes fast enough, but um, we can essentially operate like the rest of the state and Miami-Dade County um, has um, sent out uh, a very detailed, detailed plan of how they are planning to operate um, that I'll send all of you right now. It's called the New Normal Guide, uh, Miami-Dade County Reopening. Um, and I'll forward that to each of the commissioners while I'm sitting here, but the attached guide accompanies um, the county's proposed order that it's gonna put out. And it's been shared with the governor. Um, the um, how much of that plan or what parts of the plan I think have been, you know, some of that has been decided. The guide um, has a color identification system on page four of it. And um, we are currently in an orange condition. And once the new order is issued for phase one, uh, which it has been, then uh, we'll move to what's called the yellow condition. Uh, when the phase two opening occurs, will then move to the green condition. Um, the specific recommendations for each of the areas allowed to reopen begin on page 20 of the guide I'm gonna send you. And I'll also send this in the email. The items in um, bold are the things that are required to be done. The items that are listed, but not in bold are recommendations that are suggested to the governor, but are not required. Um, this document will be available um, on the county's website. And, um, and you'll be able to go um, there as well. But I'll, like I said, I'll send it to all of you. Hopefully it's helpful. Um, it's a lot to um, sort of, um, I was on a call a little bit earlier today with several attorneys and it's a lot to digest, but um, Briar County, Miami-Dade County, um, are both um, doing something, you know, what they've asked asked for was something a little bit different. Different. Um, how much of an operation um, um, in terms of um, uh, food establishments, in terms of, you know, at 50% capacity, and, and I think um, Miami-Dade was asking for 25%. So that's, you know, that's, I'll, I'll have some better understanding of that tomorrow once the dust settles. But as of now, um, you know, you can at least sort through what they're calling the new normal guide. And, uh, and then I'll be working with the manager to um, help 
um, determine what kind of things the city can be more restrictive in, if any. So if I'm hearing this clearly, um, the manager, attorney, and staff need more time. Uh, yeah, to sort through what um, what is allowable and, and, and what's not for cities. It was still, as of our call today, um, there was still a lot of, um, you know, we, we're, even the attorneys are trying to sort it out. So I'll start with just sending you what Miami-Dade County has put out, put out as what they call their new normal guide and what the code sections mean. Like even um, one of the issues that you might be interested in, we're as a, turn, as a group of attorneys, we're pushing for um, being able to have virtual meetings longer for a longer period of time. Um, what the governor had previously stated was that, um, or his staff had stated was that they were looking to stop the virtual meetings at phase two of, um, of the plan. And so I know that many city attorneys, because some of the um, commissioners that they are some of the commissions they represent, um, you know, they, they may be at, a, at an age that's a high risk age, um, some of them. And so, you know, people don't, necessarily want to get out and travel right now to come to meetings and possibly be exposed to COVID-19. So um, what we're asking for some of us um, as a group is for that the governor to consider making that a part of phase three. The only thing is we don't know when phase three will start, but whenever it starts, uh, we know that we would like it to be you know, beyond the time of phase two so that you all still have that flexibility to be able to meet virtually. So even though you know, there's still a lot of um, you know, holes and everything that need to be filled in and, uh, and within the next day or so, I think we'll get there. Okay. Um, as the attorney uh, laid out, like this is a, a very comprehensive plan um, and it has some really good recommendations. I do want to make sure I state that very good recommendations for what we need to do um, for our businesses, um, what businesses need to do um, in order to uh, reopen. So there's a lot of great, great information. Um, we just need to fine tune and find out what may not work for our uh, city and at least know if that is the case. So. Uh, if um, any of my colleagues have any thoughts on, on, on that, or on this reopening. If I get yeah. um, Commissioner Bass. I, I have two, well, concerns, I guess. Um, saying that we're, we would only be starting our testing next week, we won't have a clear picture of our true numbers as it relates to COVID. Hopefully that our residents will come out and be tested. I think we don't really know our true numbers. So that's that's kind of hard for me to even consider um, reopening, not knowing our true numbers. And second of all, I would like to ask, I guess, to the manager, what percentage of our businesses are closed? Good question. You gotta unmute yourself, Mr. Manager. Sorry, that's a good question, uh, Commissioner. I would tell you a majority of our businesses, over 50% of them are closed uh, because a lot of them didn't meet the uh, designation of essential businesses, uh, especially our industrial businesses in our industrial and commercial areas, as well as our mom and pop businesses, our restaurants. So uh, yes, a great majority of them are still closed. Thank you. Um, are we able to get a accurate understanding? Matter of fact, I would love if we do have a, a, a business uh, organization, chamber of commerce, or even a working group um, so that our business owners can be able to, we can be, un, we can be clear about what are the business within our community, what are their needs uh, moving forward. So I know that's an additional ask that may need uh, funding or something allocated to it to make that happen. Um, but I think that's something we do need to consider. Um, Commissioner Kelly. Um, yes, Mr. Mr. Mayor, that was a question I had too as well on the um, number of business that would be impacted. Since the attorney and the manager are still kind of working through this, um, have in your glance at looking at it, because I've, I've looked at it as well, and there seems to be some 
conflicting because you said that we could not go any more restrictive than what the um, governor said or what's been put out. But I know some cities have their own time frames of when they're reopening certain things. So there has to be some flexibility um, or am I understanding that we don't have that same flexibility? Um, they're opening up on uh, basically Monday, but I know some cities are not opening up the same way. They're opening up the different uh, phases with certain businesses, et cetera. We did mention the 50% uh, capacity that the county is talking, but in the state, the other parts with their phase one was 25%. So we're jumping all the way to 50. So we have no flexibility to do 25 because of those county orders. Is that what I'm understanding? Mr. Mayor? Um, Madam Attorney? Okay. Um, those are the kind of things that are being debated. Um, Commissioner Kelly, um, there, are, there are a group of um, attorneys and I have some legal opinions that um, the suggestion is, is that under an emergency situation, um, some attorneys are advising the commissions that they can operate independently of the county. Um, that is not so much my recommendation for the city of Oblaka because we don't have our own emergency plan. So we do need to, as I've mentioned in um, other meetings before, we do need to coordinate uh, whatever we decide to do with the county and, and ensure that uh, they're on board because we're essentially operating um, consistently and per Florida law with um, with the county's plan and direction and coordination is, is the words that are used, coordination. So um, these are some of the issues that we'll be uh, working through. Um, I'm sure that the county is going to be um, sensitive to the fact that um, um, we have made complaints and they are aware, very well aware of it due to the testing site being open in Opelika um, and, and the, and the um, um, and the difficulty that went into working through that uh, issue. And so I'm sure that if additional things are needed for uh, Opelika, because this is something that the commission wants to do uh, and whether that is being more restrictive and that's not something that the, the county is doing necessarily in their unincorporated areas, I'm thinking that they will probably work with the city of Opelika through its managers. So. Um, let, let us um, you know, ask some of those questions and, and wait until the dust settles a little bit tomorrow. And I think we'll have some more answers for you. Um, and, um, uh, but uh, the short answer is some cities are, are operating because they believe that they have certain charter provisions that allow them to do something differently. They may, not, they may have their own emergency plan. So everybody's a little bit different based on how they're structured. So, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Commissioner Kelly. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, as of Monday, when the county reopens their phase one, our restaurants, 50%, our parks, whatever, will follow the same guidelines um, that they're that they are using in the county for phase one. What I am saying is, um, we'll need tomorrow through tomorrow to work through that. Commissioner Kelly, I don't think that they're going to, if we're indicating we're having a problem, I think the county will as they have before, because we have some things that are more stringent right now than what the county does, right? But they've approved those things. And so I think that they will work with the city to um, allow the city to operate in the, in the way that it believes it needs to in order to protect the health, life, safety of its residents. So let us get back with you on it because we just got the order today and the county has just, the county hasn't even put out its own order yet. Okay, so we know because we've been hearing that they're gonna do something, but right now all we have is these new normal, new normal guidelines and that's what I've sent to you. So, um, you know, let us get back with you on um, specifically what the, one of the things that may be helpful as a commission, if you all were to talk through some of the things right now so that you could give your managers some direction in terms of what you'd like to see. Um, so that if, um, if a, an emergency order or something like that is necessary or an emergency meeting or whatever else, he at least has a heads up on what you think you would like to see. You can't vote obviously tonight, but if you want to give him some idea of, hey, we still want things to be closed until we can see the numbers getting better or more testing or whatever. I think those are the kind of productive conversations that um, you know, might be helpful to the manager. 
Mr. Mayor, that's why I'm asking that question because um, I'm hearing that they're gonna open up. We gotta follow their mandate, but there are some things, listen to the manager in the past that we have um, ongoing challenges with. So I don't know if he wants to lay those out, but I, I want to make sure that we all ex you know, express our concerns that we may have at this point. So if he does have to issue a some kind of emergency order based on something coming down the pipe, um, we will know. I, I mean, I still have concerns about certain businesses opening, um, given the way they're just made or structured and how the social distancing would, would take place and how we're gonna make sure that they go around to make sure they comply, et cetera, and so forth. Um, so that's a great concern considering you're gonna find out over by tomorrow, but to the um, to the mayor, I guess, Mr. Manager, you're already looking at those possibilities. Um, you know, I still have concern, for example, with parks and social distancing and things of that nature. While I'd like to see them open, I am still concerned to make sure that we have we sanitize and all the stuff we need to do before we open up various things as well. Um, okay, I guess we'll wait to see. But those are kind of my general concerns. We have to follow the county. We have to follow the county because we're following their their um their plan. Yeah, right, and all this and through the mayor. Um, are you done, Commissioner Kelly? Yes. All right, Mr. Manager. You know, uh, you know, as you all have, have always been aware, the, the the health, welfare, and safety of the community has always been my utmost uh, priority. Um, as uh, our city attorney stated, once she goes through these provisions and we can see which provisions allow me to extend or be more restrictive or not, then it gives me a little bit more gauge of what I want to do. Uh, I don't foresee opening barbershops, for example. I don't foresee opening barbershops back up. I, don't, I do not foresee uh, opening up a majority of the businesses back up, at least for a short period of time at least for a short period of time until the commission has had time to kind of discuss these things in, in a more detailed situation. If I was to institute an emergency order, it would uh, basically keep Opalaka at a status quo until we've had enough time through workshop to discuss these items so a proper uh, order is drafted rescinding various restrictions, you know, on, on, a, on a graduated level. Um, and that's what I would be looking to do. Any other comments from my colleagues? All right, I'm actually, I've, I've been sitting back going through this document. Um, and right now I, I don't see anything that would be um, a problem. Um, the guidance that they're giving for barbershops um, in this document that they provided, um, and that's in this workshop agenda packet, uh, basically details what a barbershop would do to um, open up. And uh, let me actually see if I can pull up the actual barbershop restrictions. But they're basically telling us very simple things um, for those that may not have the document in front of them, uh, so that it's only appointment only. Um, that you have to have some type of mechanism in place to where uh, those that have, a, there's no walk-ins allowed. Those that have an appointment, they have to be notified through some type of device or call that they got to wait in a car. Um, once that person, the customer leaves, they got to, that person comes in. Um, they, the barbershops can't share um, tools like their clippers, they have one time user aprons. So there's actually a lot of good information in there that is going to be abided. Um, if abided by seems to, it actually looks reasonable to me. Um, my concern is enforcement and checking in on that. And that's why I want to know about what we're doing as a city to reopen, because this is going to take uh, restructuring of our government to be able to bring about more personnel who can check on these businesses. 
So for example, we do have a police op, uh, department and we have a code enforcement. You don't need police to do code enforcement stuff and they don't gotta be fully phone police uh, because they're just going out there writing citations. So this looks like it may be an expansion of code enforcement and the adoption of these things as part of our code so that during this pandemic, we're able to have our code enforcement officers go out there and check this, uh, which means it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot. Um, and that's what I'm looking for from management. I wanna see what the restructuring of this government looks like, because uh, it's gonna be massive. It's going to change, it's gonna cause a lot of issues because I know city of Myanmar is already furloughed um employees yeah. uh, so it's it's going to it, and it's going to be some very hard discussions about who's going to be working and who's not and what are their roles um and that's what i would like to see um and i, I know it's hard a very hard conversation to have um uh, because these are people livelihoods but it is a conversation that we need to have and we need to be clear about and how that's going to work because if we're expanding code enforcement um if we reduce in our uh park staff um th those are considerations with the fact that we're going to lose out on very significant revenue because of uh, uh taxes and our revenue streams so what does that look like um and that's what i would like to see um when is how is that who's developing that how is that being developed? And when will we as a commission see that and see those recommendations? Uh, that, that's my concern and that's my thoughts uh, to management um, in regards to reopening um, the city of Opelika. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Kelly. I, well, I was waiting to talk about the enforcement at the end because you said you were gonna do that at the end. Um, I share that same concern, so I'll save my enforcement you mentioned about the barbershop, and I, I'm looking at it as well. The reason I brought it up is because a lot of these businesses are of the mindset that on Monday they can open up. I use restaurants, the barbershops, and the like salons are all thinking on Monday they can open up at 50% capacity. I know many of them have received information from the state about the distancing, about the appointments only, whatever. So they're aware of that part. But if we're not ready for that in the city, We've only got three days or whatever to uh, get that word out or four days, whatever, before Monday, because a lot of them are, are really uh, thinking in terms of they're going to be able to open up uh, on Monday. So that, that's why I brought up, I use the example of the restaurant, but I really was referring to any of those businesses because they're thinking they're going to be able to open it up. So if I'm hearing the manager correctly, they're going to go over it, I guess, between now and tomorrow and see what he can do um, in terms, he's already made it clear to certain things he doesn't want to see open. So I guess um, if need be, Madam Attorney, uh, from the mayor to the attorney, he would be able to do the emergency orders the same way if, if he's allowed through the county um, process. Well, ideally, you know, the way you all have it set up is that you will, um, you know, you will call an emergency meeting if it's necessary and, and work through some of these things. And that's what the manager is saying he wants you to do. He's saying he wants your buy-in. Now, I guess what you could do, and I, and I, I was just texted um, by a colleague who was telling me that um, um, it's believed that in Miami-Dade County, now what you're looking at and what you should have in front of you um, that I just sent to all of you, is these are guidelines, but there's going to be an order that goes along with it. That order, I have not been able to locate yet. I don't think my, I don't know if Miami-Dade County has issued this order. If it has, I don't see it on their website. So we, but what's expected and what a colleague was just letting me know is that they believe that the cities are still gonna have flexibility to do within the order that's issued by um, Mayor Jimenez to do what they believe is best for their own individual city. So, so what the governor's uh, order did today was simply relax and allow for um, us to be under the same um, 
um, you know, allow for the state to uh, us to operate businesses to operate and things to be reopened like the rest of the state. But Miami-Dade County can issue its own order that will apply to individual cities. And so what I'm understanding is that that order when it is issued um, is expected to be um, uh, flexible for cities to be able to do what what they think is best for their um, municipalities. So we'll get back with you tomorrow. We'll have better um, information and hopefully including, which will include the order from Mayor Jimenez. And then you all will be able to, you know, kind of consider it and digest it from there. But um, to answer, go back to answer your question. Um, it's not ideal that you, um, um, you know, the, the, and the manager is not even asking for that, that you just have, unless you unless your guidance is now that you you are okay with the manager um, just conceptually um, doing whatever he needs to do to extend how Opalaka has been operating currently you know in the current state unless that's kind of what you're saying I think he's looking for some direction from you all and and maybe this might be a good time and I keep pushing this a little bit for you to give a little direction if you're not wanting to do that at least, maybe have a time that you might want to meet or talk or, or let the manager know you're fine with him entering as a, as collect, you know, as a, you can't vote on it, but as a consensus kind of thing, you're fine with him um, entering something that will allow Opalaka to the extent that it can operate the same way it's operating right now, no matter what Miami-Dade County um, opens up. So those are some of the, you know, big kind of big deal issues that um, you know, you may want to get some thought to, just so that your manager knows how he's supposed to move forward. Because right now, he technically doesn't have that authority, right? It's it's not like he technically has it, but if you um, give him some guidance, he'll be able to know how to operate. So, Mayor, um, um, go ahead, Commissioner Kelly. Go, wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, I I, I followed that what you're I'm saying, like, and I think that the manager, you know, has been around. He understands health and wealth and safety and all of that. Um, I was really more so pointing to the fact, um, kind of in the same vein what the mayor was saying, because we know this is coming uh, and what it's gonna entail to make sure that this stuff gets enforced, to make sure folks are doing, because that's always a challenge when you get stuff in the state and even sometimes in the county, how it's enforced or how it's adhered to. And you have these businesses believing that they're going to be able to function on Monday. Now, the manager's indicated it's not his preference that certain businesses be open on Monday, if I heard him correctly say that. I know he mentioned barbershop, but it may be some more that he doesn't feel really should be open on uh, Monday for whatever the reasons, one of which might be just how we're going to enforce to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, I, I want to know. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. You said something? No, no. You still have the floor. Oh, okay. That, that's the, the question I have because I'm not sure we're ready on Monday to open up the way the county is suggesting, uh, even though they've laid it out. And um, I don't have a lot of concerns necessarily. I am concerned with that 50% to start off with when everybody else started with 25, we're jumping straight to 50% uh, percent in terms of um, capacity in, in some of these venues. That's really my only one. Um, but I don't think we're ready at this point to open up on Monday. So I would hope we have that ability, since you all are gonna be having these discussions, that we would have a extra week or so like some of the other cities. And that would give the manager a chance to make sure that number one, we are going to enforce it because I'm quite sure code is gonna be a major um, part of that as well as the police or whomever you have doing it. So that, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I still want to get to that, to the enforcement after you finish this discussion on the county's draft here. All right. Um, so, Mr. Manager, when will we be able to have a analysis of something in front of us uh, so that we can see how this restructure in our government uh, will work? Um, and how we will enforce this stuff. These are these are ongoing discussions that have been going on. We've already had meetings with ASME. Uh, uh, 
the union in regards to potential furloughs and layoffs and reduction of workforce and change of uh, statuses and positions and various different things like that. I say uh, it's gonna, probably going to take me a week. Next Thursday, I'll be able to have, probably have a document on the table to you about what we're looking at. The, the concern I have is um, the commission is asking for additional manpower for enforcement. And I don't see where I'm getting that additional manpower. Well, certain certain members of the commission request additional manpower for enforcement, right? And so I don't see where I'm getting that additional manpower from when I have to do a, a potential reduction of workforce in order to make sure that we may remain financially stable moving forward into the next budget year. So that those are things I have to juggle around and look at. Because I know, Mayor, you've asked for aids and additional code enforcement and various different things like that. So I have to look at that, uh, get with the uh, uh, budget, see how that can get incorporated within the budget while taking in consideration these other personnel changes that most likely are gonna have to take place. Okay, well, let me clarify the record. I haven't asked for uh, that. I'm thinking it through what this stuff will look like and knowing that with our current manpower, we will not be able to enforce it. So I just kind of think that. And if you don't believe that you would need more people to enforce all these things? I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying I'm not we need not need more people, Mayor. What I'm saying is if we're talking about a potential reduction in workforce, okay, that's inevitably gonna happen. We just have to rebalance the priorities. If we're gonna add positions, fine. We add positions for enforcement. Um, the police department is looking at bringing on additional police, okay. but we have right. to look at all those things. All right, and let me be clear about what I'm saying. I'm not suggesting a, a reduction of work first. I'm not suggesting hiring folk. I want to know what management has uh, in terms of implementing this new normal. I would like to know what those options are. What is, what is that picture? Uh, will there be reductions? Will there be additions in certain areas? Uh, what will be the services and programs we'll be able to provide as a city uh, moving forward? Um, what does that look like? What are the costs involved in that? Um, so that's brought before us as a commission to figure out uh, because that's on, our, on, on us as a, as a commission to identify the different departments, different offices, that's part of our charter responsibilities. However, we cannot, um, and it, it won't be good for us to make those decisions without having an accurate assessment of the costs, the impact, where we are. So uh, these ideas that I'm kind of just doing out, because I'm like, okay, I'm just thinking through this logically, um, are part of those considerations. So I just want to make sure that we are clear about what is gonna be our plan as a, a city. Um, and I think this is the number, this is one of our, and I know as a manager, this is a lot because <laughs> this is not the only crisis that we're dealing with. Um, and we just made a significant accomplishment with one of the crises that we're dealing with and because of this is a financial com this has a financial impact and we're in a financial crisis trust me um, i'm very much aware of all those considerations however we got thousands of people in this city that are relying upon us to do this you have a plan thousands of businesses that are trying to figure out what to do we got thousands of people who work in the city of opalaka that are unclear. And we need to provide that clarity as soon as possible because everyone around us is doing it. Um, and right now we wanna figure out what that looks like uh, for, for, for the city. So that's the only thing, man, I, I trust me, I understand this is, this is a lot. Um, this is a lot. Um, and that's why we're here on uh, seven o'clock on a Thursday night after having all these meetings 
because this is important and we need to figure this out. And literally our livelihoods, how we live and work here in the city of Opelika depend upon this. Um, so uh, let me give uh, uh, Vice Mayor Commissioner Bass, if y'all have anything else um, on this reopening plan. Mayor Paget. Commissioner Bass. I would just like to reiterate, I am very uncomfortable at this point in saying that we don't have true numbers of what our, um, um, for lack of a better word, victims are. I, I Once I get those numbers, I would be in a better place to, to make a judgment call on reopening. But as of right now, I'm not comfortable with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mayor, um, if I may, just to kind of yes, piggyback sir. on Commissioner Bass' concern, Commissioner Bass concerns um, about the numbers, um, we really need that to make, you know, a better informed decision. Um, me personally, I know, I know we have to kind of find a balance between, you know, economic recovery and public safety. And I think all cities, counties, state governments, as well as the federal government is all, uh, you know, we're all looking for that balance. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'll be I'll be on the lookout to see what other cities are doing and just, you know, kind of keep on the ear to the streets to see what's going on and how things are progressing. And I look forward to, um, you know, coming back to our next convening and um, sharing that with the manager as well as um, the rest of the members of the commission. Okay. I, um, I think that was a good point brought up, uh, Mr. Manager. Uh, I know we've had quite a few conversations um, about this testing center. Um, and I'm not in, involved in the details of how it runs now, um, and you, you got that. But I um, hope that we can, you can have conversations with the, with the coordinators of the center uh, about the numbers. Um, that's something that we have had uh, issue with. Um, as you know, we are 33054, and almost our whole city is encompassed by 33054, and their numbers is much less than was reported by the Department of Health for the city of Opelika. Um, so we got to get a hold to what those numbers are. Um, and this testing facility is going to test people from all over. Um, um, but since they're within the city of Opelika, we do have a direct communication to them. Um, and we, I would love to be very clear about how they record who, where the people that live at are. Um, and if we can get very clear understanding of those numbers, like how many people in this block have been reported or in this complex have been reported. Um, if there's any way we can figure out and get those numbers, um, that is a, a top priority, it sounds like, of, of, of this commission to make happen. So we can figure that out. Um, that, that would be a big deal. Understood. And I'm working very closely with the testing site moving forward, Mayor. Again, thank, thanks to you and, and our uh, state, local and county stakeholders and getting this accomplished. Um, I, the baton has been passed to me and I will be monitoring the testing sites on a daily basis. And dealing with the incident commander and getting that data that you guys need. And if there's any data that you guys missed today that you think of, please feel free to shoot me an email, a text message, or a phone call, and I can make sure I can try to get that data, specific data or demographic pool pulled for you guys in a timely manner. All right. Um, let's wrap up that conversation and let's finally talk about um, enforcement. Um, I know Commissioner Kelly, you've been going on that. So go ahead. You have the floor. Now I have a formal presentation for you, uh, Commissioner K uh, Kelly. For oh, well, let's do the formal presentation first. So uh, this weekend, uh, as we all know, um, there was several concerns in regards to mass gatherings, violations of social distancing, curfew, um, various other issues um, in regards to the enforcement of the local emergency orders. Um, I uh, directed the chief of police to do a, a top to down review and causation analysis of what caused uh, what happened this weekend to occur and what part plans that does he have in place to prevent it from happening again. So I give the floor to Chief Dobson.
Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Based on what the manager just advised, uh, we received a call May 9th around 7 o'clock and our units were dispatched in reference to a large disturbance at the garden departments. Once the officers arrived at the garden departments, they realized that there were approximately two large parties going on to include bounce house, food truck, and some other things. We've had approximately a couple hundred people out there. So because of the large crowd, we had to actually contact the Miami-Dade police and also Miami police to assist the six officers that we had on duty at that time. 45 minutes to an hour later, we were able to gain control of the crowd and everything and everyone were dispersed at that time. While that incident was going on, there was another incident going on on the east side of the city where actually a street was blocked also with another party going on, approximately 75 personnel at that party. The officers responded there also, gained control, the roadway was opened back up. And at that, on that side, a couple of arrests were made at that incident. Uh, basically what occurred here was a, the officers themselves and the supervisors themselves at that point did not do what they were instructed to do in the past. So we take full responsibility for the, the officers and the supervisors on duty that did not do what they were told and passed on from my office down. The supervisors, supervisor was uh, disciplined for failure to, to supervise. The officers were also disciplined. Going forward, what we've also done now is, is put a zero tolerance on loitering, the in violation of social distancing, and also the curfew. This happened before curfew, so mainly loitering in violation. Prior to this incident occurring, two days prior, I actually sent correspondence over to management because we've we've had instances where the super uh, the security company failed to do exactly what was being mentioned here today. So it was email sent to the security and to the property management basically saying that you guys have to assist us or to even notify us because they failed to even notify us when, when they allowed these large gatherings to occur. What we've also done now to make sure that this doesn't happen again is everyone has been placed in uniform, which I've done in the past, but there's no one else left inside the office have an additional five to six officers that only thing they're gonna do is concentrate on what we just discussed with the social distancing, the zero tolerance for loitering. Uh, because we are on live now on YouTube, I don't wanna give the times for those officers, but we now have an additional five officers that were in the investigation, uh, school resource officers or red light camera staff that's been working on, on a shift now that's gonna be our COVID uh, concerns squad. They will also assist us with overtime now because with those officers there, they're being moved from their current duties to assist with COVID, COVID uh, concerns. So we won't have any overtime because they will be working on that shift. And that's currently where we are right now. And I'll be happy to take any questions for anyone at this time. Chief Dobson, approximately how, mu how much or how many Let me articulate this right. How much police resources was used to gain the city under control at that time? Approximately how many units from how many different police departments, about how many officers? Well, the six officers that we had here in the city and include the supervisor, North Miami sent two and Miami-Dade sent about eight to 10. So we're looking at about 18 officers, 18 to 20 officers to gain uh, control of the crowd. Okay, thank you. Anybody from any, I, I know this is a hot topic item that I know the commission has uh, brought up to me. Um, I leave the floor open uh, to ask the chief any questions in regards to this specific incident. All right, who wants to go first? Um, Mr. Mayor, if I may just kind of point Mayor out, um, um, I just want to point out just one um, concern. As you know, I, I receive a lot of the complaints uh, when the police department uh, 
usually enforces curfew in Glorietta Gardens and other areas. One um, one area in particular um, of concern has been, that, of course, Glorietta Gardens. Um, some of the residents, of course, feel that the police department kind of uh, usually, you know, go in and on a daily um, near curfew time and they kind of aggressively patrol. Um, my concern is I know that other, I guess, gatherings are taking um, place throughout the city. And I know that our police department are responding to some of those because I see them, um, you know, from time to time, and some of them are in my community. So I see the police, um, you know, actively patrolling and enforcing curfew and social distancing. Um, but um, one of the reasons I'm bringing this, um, you know, both of them up is because they're kind of two different dynamics. Like Mr. Manager, you kind of alluded to earlier that, um, you know, those in apartment complexes, you know, them simply sitting on their porch is almost, you know, you know, a violation in, in, in itself because it's, you know, it's public property. So after a certain time, you can't be there. You know, you have to buy by social distancing guidelines, you know, certain, um, certain liberties, you know, you wouldn't have in the comfort of your home or on um, private property. So, um, of course, I, I've, you know, I've noticed the, I guess the, the disconnect, you know, as far as like enforcement and, 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 and you know, what it looks like. Um, but maybe I guess you guys could kind of speak to that um, because, it, you know, I do get those complaints a lot and I'm not sure of the legalities, um, you know, around those specific points. But if you can speak to that, I, I, I greatly appreciate it so that I can, um, you know, respond to the community with the, with the proper answer. Mr. Uh, well, Manager, you want me to respond? Yes, Chief, you can, you can respond. Um, Through the mayor. You respond, Mr. Uh, Manager, because I want to uh, piggyback on, on that um, concern. I have the same uh, exact concern. Um, I used to live and stay in very similar conditions, uh, apartment complexes, and I know uh, going outside is a relief um, and it's needed many times. So um, I would love to hear your, your thoughts on how we are responsibly enforcing uh, curfew in those areas too. So I piggyback on the vice mayor, chief. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I had a conversation in, uh, with the Miami-Dade public defender and also the state attorney about a week ago regarding that. And basically what we put out to the officers is that if a person is sitting outside their apartment door, as long as there's six feet difference or space between the apartment next, next to them, then they're fine to do that. What the officers are basically just telling the person that open your door and you're, you're fine. But what, what happened on a couple of cases, I think which one of the ones may be the vice mayor speaking of is that you had everyone basically sitting out in their apartments and they had so many different chairs in between, so it wasn't enough social distancing. So the only thing we did was educate at that time and said that you can be, just make sure that there's between your door and the next door, that there's just enough space between you, then there's no issues with anyone sitting outside. We understand that everyone has cabin fever or whatever, and no one wants to just remain in their apartment. But when you have a small apartment with a number of people in it and everyone wants to come out, it just violates the social distancing. And that's the only concern that we've had. But we understand that perfectly. I've, I've received some of the same calls in reference to uh, from some of the, uh, the people that live in the community back there. And we're definitely understanding and uh, respectful of that space. So we, we try to work with them when it comes to that. Vice Mayor, you have anything? Um, yeah, thank you for that, um, Chief. Um, that's very informational. Um, I guess, could you sp speak to, I guess, more on the enforcement side of our uh, residential um, residents, like the ones who you know reside in um, single family homes and kind of like how, I guess, a similar scenario would be enforced. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Vice Mayor, if, if they're sitting in their yards or things like that, we're, we're, we're not, my officers are not bothering anyone or anything like that. We're just asking them just to remain at social distances or anything like that. So we're not going in someone's gate or in their yard telling them that they have to be inside or anything like that. 
I've received uh, calls similar to that, but uh, I can tell you I've met with the supervisors and the officers are, are not conducting themselves on that way. My main concern is more for people out loitering, sitting outside the stores or doing whatever. If they're out, then, then that's what we, we've been handling, but definitely not going in someone's yard telling them that it's past curfew and that they need to break up what they're doing. No, sir. All right. Um, thank you. And um, through the mayor, I just want to um, say, you know, thank you, Chief. I know this is a difficult, you know, issue to kind of navigate through, you know, the multiple layers of, um, of governance, um, you know, the challenges that we face in our communities. Um, you know, I, I know that it's not the most, you know, easiest, um, you know, law to enforce. Um, but, but what I, you know, would add, you know, I, I know you guys have been using your discretion and, um, using discernment, um, as far as, you know, who, who, um, you know, who violates the law and how it's enforced. Um, but I guess when it comes to Gloria, the gardens, I know that the residents do feel like they, they are at a disadvantage because, you know, it, again, it, it, what we spoke about earlier about social distancing and, and the fact that it's private property and just you know, not being um, not being able to access those sort of liberties. I mean, even the CDC has also said communities like ours, you know, are you know pretty much at a disadvantage when it comes to social distancing. Like you said, we don't have the public resources like uh, more affluent cities that have nice parks that you know that don't just kind of consist of um, active sports. So you know, they can go run, jog, you know, fish, you know, you know, whatever. And our parks, you know, are limited. So, you know, our residents, as they stay inside, you know, they're not as active and they're not as able to, um, to you know, kind of cope with, um, with with the whole quarantine. So, um, just with you know, just kind of having those things in consideration, um, you know, we are dealing with the community, and, you know, the law is the law, but we also want to, you know, we also want to, um, you know, work with our residents during this difficult time as well. So, uh, um, I don't know, maybe we can educate them more about, you know, cause I didn't, I w actually wasn't aware of that. And I actually received a few phone calls from Glorietta Gardens in reference to, you know, those specific issues. So maybe just, you know, kind of educating them more, or, you know, I do my part. And now, you know, the rest of the commission, we all are clear um, as far as like how we are to move forward and, you know, all, work better to, uh, to kind of get through this, um, you know, immediate um, emergency situation. Mayor Paget? Mr. Bass? Quickly, I'm a little bit confused. I need somebody to help me here. If I understood the city manager earlier when he was talking about um, social distances in the apartment complexes, he described outside the apartments as being um, public space. So now I'm a little bit confused if it's okay for, that's not what, what, what the chief is saying. There's like two different things going on here. I, I don't see it. I need somebody to explain it to me. The chief is saying that they're not bothering anybody who's basically sitting outside, whatever the case may be. And then on the other hand, I'm hearing that, you know, it is public space, so you can't. So I, I, I don't know, maybe I missed something. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, Commissioner Bass, you hit it right on the head. Um, Chief Thompson? Yes, sir. And uh, yes, ma'am, Commissioner, you are correct and the manager's correct. But like I said, I, I spoke with the, the uh, state attorney and also the public defender. And the, the reason why we kind of just give us some discretion in that is because if we arrest everyone that sits outside of the apartment, as soon as we get to the jail, they're bringing them back. And the jail is actually, and the state attorney and also the public defender is actually speaking to cities basically saying, listen, the jail is not even accepting as much. So you can't promise to appear, promise to appear right now to arrest them and say, hey, go back into your house. So we're taking them. We're taking them to jail for that. Before we leave the jail, they're leaving before us. So we're trying to give them some type of discretion by just allowing them to be there as long as they have the social distancing. But you're correct. Our side of the department is public, but we just give them that discretion and allow them to be there. But it's actually correct. 
once they come outside the apartment, it is the public. Yes, it is. If I may, um, Mayor Paget? Yes, Commissioner Bass. I, I got this, but what I'm saying is that we need to be on the same page. If, if we're gonna go the route that you're talking about, we need to go that route. If we're gonna go the route where the city manager's talking about, we need to go that route because we're sending our residents mixed messages. Either we're gonna do it this way or we're not. So there has to be some kind of compromised and still use discretion, but everybody has to be on the same page. Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Uh, well, let me, Mr. Manager. I, 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 I say this day one, you know, we have a job to do. We have a, a curfew to enforce social distancing soon, mass protocols to enforce. I totally understand our residents' concerns in regards to uh, the prison pipeline and putting people into the system, various different things like that. I, part of the issue is the officers are getting lack of cooperation in these areas. Your Gloria, your Gloria Garden Apartments, your 22nd Avenue, your Back Blues, so on and so on. There are YouTube videos, there are Facebook videos that clearly show people outside congregating, violating social distancing, violating curfew, telling the officers, F you, we're not moving, we're not going anywhere. That, that this is this is this is a reality, right? Okay. So we're dealing with that part of reality, right? And I'm dealing with my officers. We got good officers that are enforcing, right? Then we got Friday, where I know for a fact there's no way these officers could have patrolled these streets and not seen these parties and these large gatherings in the back blues and the large block parties and various different things like that. And ironically, everything starts getting the force at shift change at 1800 hours. Well, what happened, what happened between, um, what, what, what happened between 0600 hours and 1800 hours that caused this to get so large. So there has to be a police accountability. And I know this topic really um, is near and dear to Commissioner Kelly. So I really want to hear what he had, what he wants to say about the subject because he, you know, he called me with his concerns this weekend and, and his resident concerns. So I want to hear what his th thoughts are on enforcement. Because if there's a failure in our police department to enforce, okay? But then we have officers that do enforce. So we have to figure out where that breakdown is. Because there's a breakdown somewhere. If I may, Mayor Paget? Um, yeah, C Commissioner Bass. I, um, to the manager, I understand what you're saying. But right now, what I stated was, it seems to me that you all are not on the same page. Before we can address that situation implementing whatever you know deemed necessary we have to speak the same language and that's what i'm not hearing that's my problem because if we're not speaking the same language how are we going to execute so we got to get on the same page first so the language uh, that, I, that i speak is the emergency order that i sign that specifically says what the rules and regulations are in regards to enforcing curfew that's the letter of the order. Anything beyond that is uh, it's, uh, uh, taking action outside the parameters of the order, okay? And if, if state's attorneys have concerns and public defenders have concerns, that's what their job is. The public defender's job to defend somebody. That's what they get paid to do, okay? So the orders are clear of how they need to be enforced. It just needs to be fair and equal enforcement all the time. That's exactly what I'm saying, but you're still saying something different from the chief. I, I don't, you guys are not saying the same thing. So, I, so, all right, so wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not continue to um, back and forth. I think at the very end of the day, Commissioner Bass uh, wants to be very clear about um, what is being enforced and what people are being um uh, uh, arrested for. Uh, Madam Attorney, um, do we have any ability to um, 
prevent people from being arrested and put in jail with this curfew? Can we amend it? Can we address it to prevent people from going to jail? Um, no. Yes, you could. Well, well, let me just say this. What you could do is, and I think you already have um, the notice um, to appear or the similar um, language. I think you already have that in there that they have, they have that option. Um, in terms of changing it to um, no, you don't, because this is actually the language um, that you all were given from Miami-Dade County, and that's why that specific language was put in there, because that's what they gave you, according to the chief, as um, the language that they wanted you to use. So that's what we put in. Um, now, in terms of how it is carried out, um, there are some discretionary things that you can do, because I will tell you, and I, and um um, there is some concern that um, Opalaka may be the only city that is currently arresting people for curfew violations. Exactly. Okay, so that is a concern um, that is out there. And, um, and so based on that concern, you all, the uh, police chief and the manager and um, you all may want to look at that and look at how you may want to address that so that it doesn't end up being a constitutional um, um, lawsuit of some type that may be instituted against the city. You may want to look at that. So because right now that is that is what's being said by lawyers that Opalaka is the only city that's um, that's enforcing it in, in the way of arrest. So there's, you know, there has to be a happy medium. I don't know what that is. I mean, I know you, you have a tough job, chief and manager, but um, we also do need to look at the other side of that and make sure we're not going too far. Right. This, is, this is my concern that I'm having um, is that, hold up, somebody, please give me one moment. Um, you mentioned that we can't do anything about it but we may face legal action about it. Well, when I say you can't do anything about it, what I'm talking about specifically is you can't do anything about changing the language of the ordinance, okay? Because you want to allow for that discretion, but maybe as a policy issue, as a, you know, something that the chief can, maybe you can go back into a phase of wanting to do more educational stuff, knowing that you still have that on your books. I mean, you ha have to, you know, it's, it has to be a discretionary thing that the officer ha officers have. So I'm not trying to get into that. I'm only saying that um, you just make sure it's a delicate balance that you have to, a uh, delicate line you have to walk and understand that it is out there in the public that Opalaka is the only city right now that is enforcing it in this way. So not, not, not saying that they don't, we don't have a reason to be the only city. We may very well, but I just want you all to understand, you know, what those ramifications could be. Commissioner Kelly? Commissioner Mayor? Oh, let me get Mayor. Commissioner Kelly. Thank you. I'm really just sitting here scratching my head as to we're spending all of this time basically talking about apartment complexes who get money for security, get money within their budgets to do security and make sure folks adhering to whatever the rules are, whether it's sitting on the porch or sitting. The issues that were raised uh, by the chief and the manager about social distancing parties, nobody's talking about. It. We're talking about sitting on the porch. The chief has said he's talked to the state attorney and whoever else he's talked to. You have a city manager that you pay to run the city. So when he gives that order that he put out, that should be what is followed, period. Now he gives the discretion to say somebody sitting on the porch, which apparently the chief is following. We're not going to arrest you. Just stay there. But people are not following that. They're not doing that. You had, as he indicated, a need for 18 to 20 officers over there at one time. That was not five or six people sitting on the porch talking with six feet social distance. And so we need to stop talking about his education, education. Folks know, just like they know the jails don't want anybody in them because of COVID-19. They know that as well. I hear it all the time. So let's not kid ourselves like folks don't know. We've been educating since we started talking about the curfew. And Madam Attorney, there have been other cities that have arrested folks for the curfew. Maybe not the same numbers that we have, but other cities have arrested folks. They've also done citations. 
and warnings prior to that as well. So it's been a it's been a component of all three in some areas. But whether we have to arrest folks or not, we have an order put out by the manager that we're supposed to be adhering to. Those 100 people, 75 folks, the street that's blocked off uh, over by near where the vice mayor stays and areas over there where my mom used to stay. Block parties, streets shut down. Those folks know we're, we're still in shutdown mode. This was prior to the even coming out order. We're still in stay at home mode, stay safe mode. Everybody's out, literally everywhere. So we need to stop kidding ourselves about uh, educating people. They know, they're fully aware. Now, if the officers are not um, enforcing because they're afraid that they're getting these mixed messages from the commission, as Commissioner Bass is alluding to, then make it very clear. The manager has made it clear. His order is the order. Enforce the order. I, I'm amazed we're spending all this time. If we're, we're, we've been blessed that we have not had even more instances or challenges. We're exposing the officers every time they go over there in crowds into complex or apartments. The chief mentioned a couple, there are several more. You had issues in the barricades with people partying and bounce houses and 75, I, count, I counted 30, 40 kids, let alone adults, right down the street from where, you know, and, and other places, residents are calling with people having parties blocking on streets just past weekend. That's why I call a manager, what in the world is going on? Because the police can't be everywhere, but it's wide open. Education, we can educate, but I, in my opinion, the education order is the is order. We need education to enforce the order Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Otherwise, just take out the book. Yeah, Don't so, have it there because it's a joke. That, and that, and, and hold, that, hold on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please do not interrupt someone else speaking. Commissioner Kelly, you have the floor. Once Commissioner Kelly is done, I will call upon the next person. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If, if we're not going to have it, then just say we're going to just educate and, and we're going to warn. But if we're going to have something on the books, we need to enforce it there. That's, that's why people are doing what they're doing. That's why they're out and about, not just in apartment complexes, go to the corner store, go to the bus stop. We know who live in the city. A lot of these folks don't, don't aren't catching the bus, they're just hanging around because they feel it's open. They're not six foot or six feet social distancing. They're just doing whatever. And I think the challenge for me as I look at it, the officers are getting mixed signals from the commission, from the leadership. We either want to enforce Oh, we don't want to enforce it. We don't want to enforce it and just want to educate because we feel it's over heavy handed or criminalizing our people. Just take it off and say, officers keep educating and don't arrest anybody and let's just hope it gets better. I mean, because what we're doing here now, obviously folks are not taking us serious. They are not, to, and, and, and if we don't start enforcing or dealing with this, even when the mass ordinance takes a play, effect, you're going to have the same challenge. You're going to have the same challenge. We just have to be talking about apartment complex. I still have not heard, how did it get to 75 or 100 people that the apartment complex did not call somebody and say, hey, we know this is a crowd gathering. We've told them disperse and they won't. We need the police help. I haven't heard that yet. Same thing on, on some of the streets that have block parties. How come we didn't see, you know, the tent going up and the DJ setting up and five cars getting together and all of a sudden the street is blocked up. I got people calling me Commissioner, why is the street blocked down and the police not saying anything? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But I also know from hearing this dialogue, the police and the chief and everybody's in a tough position because they're getting mixed signals. We're either going to enforce the order that the manager has or just take it off and say we're just going to educate and hopefully our folks will just do the right thing. I don't think that's going to occur because it has not occurred. And now that you're going into this phase one where they kind of reopening everything, it's not going to get any better. So if that curfew is a challenge and we don't want to criminalize our people, just do away with it. But right now, that's been on the book since the manager put the order out there. But this past weekend has, was just, you know, and I'm not just alluding to the apartment complexes all over. So that means when all of those six officers that we had in District of County was over at the apartments, there was nobody on the east side of town. Nobody on the east side of town. People know that we're not that big of a city. But here we're de debating on whether he should be on the porch and whether we should arrest him. Just make a decision. If, if we're not gonna enforce whatever we're saying, 
through the curfew, what have you, just take it off and let the officers keep educating and tell people to go in the house when they get the calls. But my concern from this whole issue of why I wanted to bring up enforcement was simply the fact of you continuously have the same thing played out. And I want to ask Mr. Mayor to the chief, how many times over the last uh, week or few weeks since we've had the COVID-19 going on, have you had these issues with apartment complex? Don't call out one, but apartment complexes, period. Well, you had to be called in because the numbers and the social distancing is not being adhered to. Several times, sir. We've had it several, several, several times. Could you give a clear statement to that? There's several times, it's been almost two months now. Um, several times can be three, which is not a lot. So what do you mean by several times? We get several calls a day. Several calls a day to where you had mass congregations at block parties? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, Commissioner Kelly? That, that's the point I'm making. It's not, if it was one or two times, but we're talking once or twice a day, because I get called, not just from apartments, please, I'm, but even, like I said, over the weekend, you had folks at, at home celebrating, and I know, you know, people are graduating, birthday, people, you, know, you have Mother's Day, people want to celebrate. I understand that, but the social distancing and, and our rules are still in effect. So that's why I'm saying he's getting several calls a day. At some point, management has to help us with this before it gets to 100. You know, because once it gets to 75, we got to call in the county, North Miami, to help us. We've already, we're challenged. And I'm just thankful that we haven't had even more challenges and what we're exposing the officers to. Every time they got to go over there to disperse these crowds, we got to think about that as well. So I, th that's my thoughts on it. If you're going to enforce, enforce. If not, take it off and let's just educate because we don't want to criminalize. But I think at this point, you, you, you got to give a clear picture and Mr. Manager, you're the manager. So you're hearing the commission, because to me, you're hearing the commission split too. To me, you're hearing educate, you're hearing enforce. So it puts you, like you said, it's puts you in a tough spot, but your order is the order. Until that changes, your order is the order. So I, I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. To the mayor. Mr. Manager. My, my, my stance has always been to enforce. I've never wavered from that stance. Uh, Chief Dobson, have I ever wavered from the stance of enforcing the order? No, sir. Enforce the order. If the commission does not feel that the order is being, not being enforced properly or we're criminalizing people, the commission can call a special meeting and they can take it off the books and then you no longer have to enforce it. But you, uh, you all as a commission signed that curfew order as a legal order, I have to abide by it. And my, 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 my order has been directly to, or, uh, to enforce it. Now I've even done email communications to all police officers on my, my interpretation of the order and how it should be enforced. I have a question. How many arrests have we made in the city and how many notice to appear have we made in the city? I don't have that information now, Mr. I will have it tomorrow for you. I can get it to the, uh, the manager on tomorrow. I don't have that information with me now. I would, I would like to very clear understand how many notices to appear that we have provided versus arrests. Um, yes. And based upon that, um, I am in the opinion to uh, 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 remove the curfew if we're going to be criminalizing um, our uh, residents. So um, once someone gets arrested, they literally have to put that on every single job application. Everyone. And we got to be clear about that that because of COVID-19, because some of these people live in apartment complexes where it's small and they are outside for a breather, or maybe they got frustrated, had an argument and they just want to step outside. And we're saying, oh, because they're a curfew, you got to stay, stay inside because that's a public place. And we're going to put a charge on there instead of a notice to appear or something. 
I got a problem with that. And I don't, I, I got a problem with that. Simple as that. Mr. Um, Mayor, we are not Mr. going Mayor, to be. Mr. Mayor. The Hulk. I have a problem with that. Um, simple as that. Um, and then I understand we can enforce, but we do not have to arrest. And if that's not clear, I don't know what is. We can enforce. There's no one saying not to enforce. We are, I personally am saying, I have a problem with arrest. And the other point is that the curfew isn't the only thing. These large gatherings are clear violations. It's not just curfew. So we are advocating the enforcement. Oh, I, I, I haven't heard anybody say not enforce on, in, on this commission. It's the extreme of going out, notice to appear, um, going into apartment complex with si sirens blasting, um, going through these apartments and people feeling as though they're being harassed. That's what we are concerned with. And I don't want us to get away from that conversation as if uh, because we are bringing up co legitimate concerns that people are having in these places and we're communicating that as duly elected voices of these people and saying that, hey, management, officers, if there's something you can do to relook at how you're doing that, please do. We're not saying not go abide by the law, but we're saying to revisit how you're treating people and criminalizing people within the city of Opelika. And if we're not the only place in Miami-Dade County that have these uh, 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 type of apartment complexes and also concentrations of low-income people. However, we're one of the very few places that are arresting people at a much higher rate than any other police department in any other city in any other government. And that is a problem. And I believe that is a problem. I would like to see those numbers about notice to appear very soon. Um, I believe Commissioner Kelly and then uh, Mr. Manager and, and let, let, let's, let's start to wrap this up y'all. Mayor, um, nobody wants to see anybody go to jail. When I use the term enforce, that's exactly what I'm saying to enforce. I asked early on when we first started this curfew that we keep up with the citations and warnings because that's really what uh, some other cities did to even get to the point of when they started to have to arrest. They showed a pattern or in some cases when they shut things down as they did on the beach. You have so many warnings, you have so many citations, et cetera. So you had a paper trail. I don't know how the police department does the documentation. I'm just saying where we are now with these large gatherings um, of people is not good for the cities. And to answer your question about, yeah, we have a, a bigger challenge, but it's also because the management and a lot of those other complexes um, do things a lot differently in East and Opelok or allow for more. Than, than some of those other ones in other places. And part of that's because, you know, I guess they feel they can get away with stuff here they can't get away in some of these other um, cities. So I'd like to see the data too, but I think we need to have a clear, clear message. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Man Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Um, I had something to say. Um, I would go with Mr. Manager and then I think Ms. Weeks. Thank you. There's a big difference when we talk about enforcing rules in an appropriate way as they're written. We speak of not enforcing or doing, uh, so let's, 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 just, let's define an arrest. If you put somebody in handcuffs and they go to the county, it's an arrest. If they're given a notice to appear, it's still an arrest. So, uh, 
So let's let's make that clear definition. Yeah, if a person is given a notice to appear and not taken to the county, they're still arrested. They just are given a date to go to court. If they don't go to court, they get a warrant out for their arrest. So there's no differentiation between somebody being placed in handcuffs and going to jail that day or being getting a ticket and having to go to court another day. That's the first thing. We're talking about gatherings out here at these apartment complexes, okay? Large fights in progress, 10 to 15 people, 20 people, fights in progress, two, three times a week. Two, three times a week. Okay, and this has nothing, doesn't even have nothing to do with curfew. These large fights turn to shooting. These large gatherings turn to violent crime. I, last time, last I looked, the city of Opelika doesn't have the best violent crime rate in the state of Florida. So you enforce based on the type of crime that you have that you're dealing with to serve the residents of the city properly. When we give mixed messaging saying we disagree with our arrest, I disagree with our arrest, a person should not have a record. It's opening a door for people to commit crime because they know that individuals on this dais has a stance that people should not go to jail. And what do they do? They commit a crime and they say, oh, I, you, I shouldn't go to jail because X, Y, Z, or I watched a meeting and I was told we weren't supposed to go to jail. This is the missed messaging that we're putting out here. If we're gonna enforce a rule, enforce it. If not, repeal it. This commission unanimously requested a curfew because of COVID-19. And it seems like we're slowly backpedaling from that. And I just want to remain consistent. So whatever direction this commission gives me to provide to the police department to do their job, I will do. But we are a state, we are in a state of confusion right now. And I will ask the chief to pull this data so it can be shared with the entire commission. So maybe next Thursday we can discuss this topic and make a decision once and for all of what we're going to do with this curfew and how we're going to handle it. But at this point right now, I'm directing the police department to continue to enforce because you all, five people signed a legal order to do that and that's what I'm going to do. Mr. Mayor. Madam Attorney. Uh, yes, um, and, and I can wait for the Vice Mayor. Um, Vice Mayor Davis. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, real quick before we close out. Um, I just wanna um, respond to the manager's comments. Uh, Mr. Manager, we're not the only city that's actually enforcing that law. Um, we, most of our neighbor municipalities actually have the, um, the same law in their books. So obviously, in my opinion, it's not a matter of um, policy. It's an um, enforcement matter, um, which directly falls under your jurisdiction. So, um, you know, I think we all agree that the law needs to be enforced, which is why we all voted unanimously um, to implement a curfew. But I think um, we were all under the impression that, um, you know, through the manager's office and the police department, um, through the direction of the chief, will put the proper measures in place to be able to implement it and also, um, you know, use discretion and um, their proper judgment. I don't know, you know, where that kind of fell by the wayside, but, um, you know, I know that was my intent behind the item. And, um, you know, we do realize the seriousness, but we also don't want to criminalize our residents as well. So, you know, some happy medium needs to be met. I don't know if we need to rescind the law or, you know, but, you know, from the very on start, we were limited as to how the law was to be implemented because we couldn't issue, you know, really any civil citations because, you know, we didn't have provisions in our code to do so. You know, the executive order came down from the county, which pretty much classified, um, you know, the curfew as a misdemeanor crime. So, you know, at that point it was either, you know, take it or leave it. So as a, as a board, we really didn't have that much um, discretion. So, you know, I think we all kind of, you know, 
had a unified opinion as far as the intent of the law. But um, like I said, somewhere down the line, um, communication broken down um, on the enforcement side. So I don't know, maybe we could pick that up or maybe you have some recommendations through the chief or I don't know what we need to do to move forward, but I'm, I'm, I'm open to revisiting the item. Through the mayor to the vice mayor and now and Will Short comment. Hold on, Hold on Mr. M manager. Uh, Madam Attorney, do you have any? Uh, yes, just very briefly. Um, I just wanted to let the commission know that there was um, an injunction that was um, placed against Metro West. And I, I'm only saying this because I don't want it. I know the whole idea behind this is to prevent the spread of COVID-19, right? And apparently in that Metro West facility, um, and it's online, you can, you know, you can just Google it. Um, there were a number of um, people who had tested positive for COVID-19 and the, they were not um, appropriately social distancing pursuant to the CDC guidelines. And so therefore a, a federal court judge entered an injunction um, for them to abide by the CDC guidelines at Metro West because it was such a mess. Now, from what I understand is a number of people have contracted and have tested positive for COVID-19 at that and other facilities. So if the whole idea behind instituting this um, curfew is to prevent people from you know, contracting the disease, well, when they go into these um, and they're arrested and they go into these facilities and they contract the disease and bring it right back into the community of Opelaka, you're really not solving the problem. You may be enhancing the problem. And so while um, I didn't mean to suggest that we have not been the only city that has, arrest, been, ha, that has arrested um, residents for um, curfew violations, what I'm trying to make clear is that at this point, from what I'm understanding from the people who work within the system, we're the only city that is currently arresting people for these curfew violations right now, right now, not you know a month ago, but right now. So, and you know, I just want to be clear that I understand the um, you know the complexity of the issue. But if you know, you I think the commission has to really balance what it, it's trying to do based on you know what could be the fallout and make sure that whatever could be the fallout is not greater um, or doesn't present a bigger problem than what you're trying to achieve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Manager. So let me give you a perfect example of discretion. We had this weekend several gatherings, 50 here, 70 there, 30 here. Chief, did we arrest 30 people on, on, on this weekend? These large gatherings, did we arrest 30 people or 20 people or 50 people or anything like that? Even people that are violating curfew, did we arrest them we pretty, i'm pretty sure you guys directed them took them took you all an hour to convince them to go back in their home you guys didn't make those arrests correct there's no some arrests. arrests you made but most times you guys direct them to go back into the home right yes sir so discretion is you i'm just making that point discretion is you Any other discussion on this item? Where do we go from here, Mr. Mayor? Um, I would like to see those numbers. Um, based upon those numbers, um, I know I will be looking to uh, 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 release this um, curfew uh, within the city of Opelaka because we implemented the curfew to stop the spread of the virus. And if we're taking people into jails where they have a higher chance of getting the virus and bringing it back to our communities, that is, that defeats the purpose. Well, since we're getting information. Uh, so, hold, 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 hold up. so that's that's where I'm in the opinion of um, to move on, but I will also strongly encourage our administration um, and just give consideration to not lock people up during this time because basically locking people up 
taking men into jail does not implement social distancing. They can't take, I don't, I don't know if it's even proper for them to be able to put, keep their masks on going into the jail. And what sanitation stuff that they're implementing there. So it's about reducing the spread of this virus. And I think that is the point that why we did this originally. And if we're locking people up and put them in known places where there, there is plenty of data that says that there is a, 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 a problem with containing this virus in the jail system. And we're sending more and more people there and we're doing it more so than other cities. And we have one of the highest infection rates like that. That, that to me is, is, is a problem that um, I know personally I uh, want to see those numbers um, and, and, and address. So once to see those numbers, um, then uh, most likely uh, I will be calling a special commission meeting uh, for that. Uh, I just wish, ideally, I just wish that management and the police have a level of discretion that is applied in other places and can learn from how other places are doing this um, and implement what other places have done, best practices there to address this because it there are block parties happening in the city. There's block parties happening in Miami Gardens. There's block parties happening all over. And when I hear that, I see it on social media. It is happening. That's no offense, it is happening. But for some reason here in the city of Opelika, we're locking a lot more people up than any other area. And that's just the facts. And that's why I want us to address. That That to me is what I want us to address. If we can address that, we're good. That's it. Good or that's it. So um, I know Commissioner Kelly came first and now go to uh, Mr. Manager. Um, yes, Mr. Manager, I, I mean, Mr. Mayor, I, I hear you loud and clear and yeah, there are block parties and everything happening all over Dade County and all the other cities. Um, I, I want the, the assist with gathering information. If the attorney can also um, at that, let us know how many other cities actually still have the curfew uh, in place or have they changed anything from the curfew order that was originally from the county. And as of Monday, uh, when we go to phase one, is the curfew still in effect? Madam attorney. Mayor to the attorney. Um, Mr. Uh, I mean, uh, Commissioner uh, Kelly, uh, in terms of the curfew, there is a website that one of the news stations has regarding the curfew in particular. I can send you that link and it has all the uh, areas um, in there and you can take the link to their specific city and read the ordinance. I can't tell you, you know, off the top I'm of my head. The county, the county. When they uh, open in phase one, based on the draft you've seen, well, is anything in there about the curfew? You gotta let her finish. You gotta let her finish first. Yeah. Okay. Have... So, so our curfew is tied to, um, and I'll go back and look at the specific language, but I believe it's tied to the governor's order regarding the um, the governor's executive order. So, um, if the clerk has it, she can pull it up. I don't have it right in front of me, but our curfew, um, I believe, is tied to that. So. Um, that is something that we'll look at and I'll let you know about. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Manager. I'll say this, and I'm speaking as a city manager and I'm speaking as a person of profession. If we bring this curfew back on the agenda for repeal and reverse course, I do not feel it would be a favorable example for our government to do that. If we at whim don't like a law and we just go and start repealing laws because we don't like them, it sets a bad example. 
and it, it, it's a, and, and it affects the morale of the police department as well. It affects the morale of the police department. You, see, you tell them for a month and a half or however long this order has been in effect to uh, enforce it. And now because of, not because COVID-19 is cured or we're in a better place, but because of controversy and conflict and disagreement, we get rid of it. That just sets a bad example, in my opinion. But we'll get you the data that you're looking for to make that determination. This whereas, as everyone sees, is that we did this in order to combat widespread transmission of COVID-19. We are not repealing this, or I'm not suggesting to repeal this because I don't like the law. My signature is on the law. It is about the fact that we are putting more people at risk of contracting this virus. And all I would like, and this is what this the, the, the whole conversation that we're talking, I have not heard from our from management or the police any suggestions or movement or how they would change or do anything to reduce the number of people arrested and taken to jail. That is what we're looking for. That is what we want to see. So once we get those numbers um, and see the those numbers, um, I think we'll have another conversation um, and, and go from there. Uh, I think we've done talked about this all the way through and through. I think we're very clear about our intent and what we want to do. So if there's any other final words, y'all, there's a lot of people that want to call it a night. I understand, Mr. Mayor to the chief. Mr. Manager. Chief, please pull up all your contacts with large groups during curfew hours, okay? And then give a ratio of how many people you guys made contact with and how many were arrested if they were arrested. That would answer the question. That would answer everybody's question. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Chief. I will, I will add that also to the numbers of arrests in uh, the promise to appear, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Hello, what, is it, what exactly are you doing? You requested, Mr. Mayor, the number of arrests and the numbers to the promise to appear. I said that I would also, the request that was just given by large groups, and I mean the people arrest, that analysis will also be added to their report. Okay. Any other discussions on COVID-19? Um, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Kelly. Um, I know since the uh, testing site is where we normally do the feeding, I wonder if the manager have we uh, made provisions to where we're going to move the food to and to make sure we get that word out. Um, I know we were that came up. Uh, we we're talking about it on Tuesday. Has there been a final decision and uh, the flyer change, or are we skipping this week, or what are we doing? So we've been in communication through the mayor, Mr. Manager. Uh, we've been in communication, uh, Commissioner Kelly. We've been in communication with Feeding South Florida. They said since we did a change of address, they have to get the change of address authorized. They asked the follow-up question, will it be the same volunteers and will it be city sponsored? We said, yes, we're waiting a response back from them, hopefully by tomorrow. Either yes, they're gonna do it and give us a new flyer or they're gonna delay it a week. My hopes is it will be approved because we answered all the follow-up questions that they had. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anything else, COVID-19? Well, we've had these tough conversations. This is actually our responsibility and our duty to be able to do. And I wanna thank everybody involved. Um, this is part of being in government and making these difficult de decisions as a commission and also as staff that have responded to us. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for being patient um, for going through this um, as we continue to figure out how we're going to deal with this as a city. So uh, with that, um, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please be safe. Um, please be safe. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Move Moved by uh, uh, Commissioner Bass, second by Commissioner Kelly. Uh, this meeting is adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.